Formal definition of limit. The learning goal of this video is describing the epsilon delta definition of a limit and how to apply the epsilon delta definition to find the limit of a function. Thanks in advance for watching this, this video. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and activate the bell. It's very important for the continuity of this channel. Before presenting the formal definition of limit, let's start by remembering that the distance between two points A and B on a number line is given as follows. We write A minus B between two bars. So the distance from x to 3 is written as. Now we, we make the distance between x and 3 less than 0 0.2. This expression can be written as the distance from x to 3 must be less than 0 0.2. We now solve this inequality. To solve this sort of inequality, we need to break it into a compound inequality. Then we add 3 from all 3 parts of the compound inequality. So all the points between minus 2.8 and 3.2 will work as solutions to this inequality. Graphically, the solution looks, looks like this. We now turn to the formal definition of a limit. To motivate the precise definition of a limit, let's consider the function. I know that you know to find the limit of f as x approaches 3. The limit of f as x approaches 3 is 7. Let us try to prove that the limit of f as x approaches 3 is 7, making the concepts of x approaches 2 are sufficiently close, precise. In order to set a standard of arbitrary closeness, let us demand that the distance between the numbers f of x and 7 be less than 0 0.1, that is. We can solve this inequality as we did before. We need to break it into a compound inequality. Then we add 7 from all three parts of the compound inequality. Then how close must x be to 3 to accomplish the inequality above? To find out, we can use ordinary algebra to rewrite the inequality, replacing f with 2 times x plus 1. We subtract 1 then we divide by 2. We now add minus 3. We can write the last inequality using absolute values. We can say that if x is a number different from 3, such that its distance from 3 satisfies the inequality, the distance from x to 3 must be less than 0 0.05. Then the distance of f from 7 is guaranteed to satisfy the inequality. The distance from f to 7 must be less than 0 0.1. The graph illustrates the limit. An equivalent formulation of our problem is writing the last expression as follows. f of x will differ from 7 by less than 0 0.1 whenever that x differs from 3 by less than 0 0.05. If we change the number 0 0.1 in our problem to the smaller number 0 0.01, then we write that f of x will differ from 7 by less than 0.01. We can replace f with 2 times x plus 1. We can factor the expression putting the number 2 in front of the absolute value. Dividing by 2, we obtain that 
x differs from 3 by less than 0 0.005. We can state that f of x will differ from 7 by less than 0 0.01 whenever that x differs from 3 by less than 0 0.005. The graph illustrates the limit. The numbers 0 0.1 and 0 0.01 that we have considered are error tolerances that we might allow for 7 to be the precise limit of f as x approaches 3 we must not only be able to bring the difference between f and 7 below each of these two numbers we must be able to bring it below any positive number and by the same reasoning we can do it if we write epsilon the greek letter epsilon for an arbitrary positive number that is our measure of arbitrary closeness to the number 7 then we write that f of x will differ from 7 by less than epsilon now replace f with 2 times x plus 1 and factor the expression as we did before dividing by 2 we obtain that x differs from 3 by less than epsilon over 2 if we denote epsilon over 2 by the new symbol delta the Greek letter delta. The expression can be written as follows. f of x will differ from 7 by less than epsilon whenever x differs from 3 by less than delta. The graph illustrates the limit. This is a precise way of saying that f of x is close to 7 when x is close to 3 because the last expression says that we can make the values of epsilon within an arbitrary distance from 7 by taking the values of x within a distance epsilon over 2 from 3. Since the absolute value of x minus 3 is the distance from x to 3, the absolute value of f minus 7 is the distance from f of x to 7, and since epsilon can be arbitrarily small, the definition of a limit can be expressed in words as follows. The limit of f as x approaches 3 is 7 means that the values of f can be made as close as we please to 7 by taking x close enough to 3 but not equal to 3. This foregoing discussion leads us to state the formal epsilon delta definition of the limit. Let be a function f of x defined on some open interval that contains the number a, except possibly at a itself, then the limit of f as x approaches a is l means that for every epsilon is greater than 0, there exists a number delta is greater than 0 such that the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon whenever the distance between x and a is less than delta. Let's see how it works. Prove that the limit of f as x approaches 4 is 35. We must find the delta. So we start with the beginning of the proof. We do enough simplification on the left hand side of inequality. So we should choose delta equals to epsilon over 8. We must show that this delta works. We use the distance between x and 4 is less than delta. 
but now we replace delta with the value of delta we have just found out. So we have shown that fx will differ from 35 by less than epsilon whenever x differs from 4 by less than delta, in which delta is epsilon over 8. And so, by our definition, we have the limit of f as x approaches 4 is 35. To prove a limit by the formal definition, it seems that things get a little messed up. I will try to write the steps to be followed. Let's begin the proof with the following statement. The distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. Next, we need to obtain a value for delta. So, we do enough simplification on the left-hand side of inequality. And this leads us to choose the value of delta. After we have obtained this value, we make the following statement. Delta equals 2. We must prove this value of delta works. We go back to the next statement in the proof and use the distance between x and a is less than delta. But now, we replace delta with the value of delta we have just found out. We need to show that for this value of delta, the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. Pay attention in the example. Let's begin the proof with the following statement. The distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. We need to obtain a value for delta. So we do enough simplification on the left hand side of inequality. And this leads us to choose the value of delta. delta equals 2 epsilon over 4. We must prove this value of delta works. We go back to the next statement in the, in the proof and use the distance between x and 3 is less than delta. We replace delta with the value delta we, ha we have just found out. We need to show that for this value of delta, the distance between f and l is less than delta. So, the limit of f as x approaches 3 is 9. Let's see another example. Let's begin the proof with the following statement. The distance between f of x and 4 is less than epsilon. We can factor x squared minus 4. So we are looking to pick delta which makes the absolute value of x minus 2 times the absolute value of x plus 2 less than epsilon. From our hypothesis, the absolute value of x minus 2 less than delta already tells us that we can make the absolute value of x minus 2 is small. But what about the other term in that product, the absolute value of x plus 2? We are free to choose delta, however, we can always insist on taking delta is less than 1. Why choose 1 here? There is no reason other than it's a nice number to work with. And the limit is only really concerned with what is happening around the point in question. x equals 2 in this case. This means we can safely assume that whatever x is, it is, it is reasonable to assume that x is within a distance 1 
from we get rid of the absolute value bars and this solve the resulting inequality for x as follows if we now add 4 to all parts of this inequality, we get. So we can say that the absolute value of x plus 2 is always less than 5. So we can replace the absolute value of x plus 2 with 5. So we should choose delta equals to epsilon over 5. To show this delta works, we start with the distance between x and 2 is less than delta. But now we replace delta with the value of delta we have just found out. And we try to reach the distance between x of x and 4 is less than delta. Pay attention.